Hello, and welcome to the Manifest to Live Life Golden Show. I am Golden Duffy. I am really excited about today's conversation. I have a super duper special guest. He is a retired police officer, inspirer, author, speaker. He works with people who are first responders and helping them in mental health and, and creating the best life possible. And I absolutely love people that are out here making a difference and putting a positive message into the world. Welcome, Patrick Fitzgibbons. <laughs> Thank you, Golden. You got it right. You I did. appreciate it. I, I love what you're doing. You're making such an impact in the world, and it's an honor to be here with you, my friend. I am so glad that we teamed up. So um, yeah. Patrick does the Criminal Justice Evolution podcast, and I was on that recently. So you should definitely check out that conversation. Absolutely. And I thought, God, we are so – like we just have a good and powerful nature together. So I wanted to have yeah. you on my show. And, and that's an honor. I don't I don't have a lot of people on my show that aren't my family. So <laughs> <laughs> well, You need to branch yeah, out. There's a big world out there, Golden. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So um, – so I also just wanted to preface this show because I don't do any, I like to keep my show lighthearted and mm -hmm. um, I want to just, just say to the listeners, you know, to be non-judgmental in the world is a really wonderful way to move through and to, to like have an open mind and an open heart and to have compassion for people and not just like listen to the narrative that's happening out there, I think has been one of probably one of the biggest things for my husband and I and creating a really powerful and joyful life is looking at situations and circumstances and saying, what's true for me? Like what feels right for me? And what are people doing in this world to actually try to make it better instead of looking at the ones who maybe have, you know, made mm -hmm. mistakes and really taking our focus off of what's wrong and putting it on what's right. So thank you for doing that because I yeah, really absolutely I, I like what you said about you know judgmental. I mean I was I was pretty judgmental uh, in my uh, younger years, actually maybe a handful of years ago. And when you when you kind of get past that, I mean we're always judging to some extent, but we, you know what I mean, Golden. When you're out there judging and you know envious and stuff like that, if you can get past that and just live yourself for you. And be happy for people. I know it's hard, but it just takes practice. Yeah. And your life will change for the better. And then you'll get what you want among, you know, and that's just one example, as you know. And it, you have to practice some other good tenets too. But I learned that, you know, yeah. a while ago. And it's it really helped me. Yeah, no, I absolutely believe that. And, and taking our, you know, ob observation powers and putting them mm -hmm. to good use instead of putting them in the in the old stories and the old beliefs. And I think we've both, yeah. you know, we've all grown up in situations where we have certain beliefs about certain people or certain beliefs about certain situations. And it's like, all we have to do is change the story. And we yeah, absolutely. Life, you right? know, I come from a background, you know, in law enforcement, like you said, you know, military, but let's stick with law enforcement. Law enforcement is a very difficult environment, as you know, and the listeners know, but you know, you, you become judgmental. I mean, you become wary, you become kind of suspicious of people and that, you know, there's a, that's a two prong thing. One, it can keep you alive and keep you safe. But the other aspect of it is now you have that view of everybody out there, you know, that you have to be judgmental and suspicious and, you know, you don't trust people and that's a detriment. You have to be able to, I have learned to have that balance. Obviously I'm still very safety conscious, but not everybody out there. The majority of people are good people. Yeah, and if we're, talking about, if we're talking about law of attraction, yeah, like how absolutely. does that play into your life and how have you been able to shift that so that you're not on this kind of edge all the time expecting things to go bad? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it takes time. It takes practice. It's an everyday thing. I went through therapy, which <laughs> I think everybody needs a therapist at one point, which helps a lot. But law of attraction is exactly what you said. You know, it's your magnet, basically, and what you put out, you're going to get back. So it's helped me when I learned tremendously the moment I started to shift my the way of thinking and shift my mindset. Not that I live in a bubble and don't have bad days, but when I started to just focus on me and my happiness and what I need to do to make the world a better place from my perspective and my self-growth and development – and I, it, you know, I started looking at the world differently. Maybe that sounds cheesy to some people, but you probably know what I'm thinking about is started to look at the world differently where, like I said before, 
I realize that most people are just good people. The vast majority of people are good people. And if you can go through life with that in your mind, as well as other things that I'm sure we'll talk about, law of attraction, then your life's going to change. You know, like I said, it's, it's, but it's hard work. It doesn't happen overnight, Golden. You know that. I mean, it takes work. It takes resolve. It takes determination. Nothing is going to fall in your lap. Yeah. You know, I always tell people, you, you are on my show. Thank you for coming on. And we talked about it. And I always tell people, the, the people I'm trying to help is, look, nobody is going to come save you. <laughs> I know that sounds mean, but that's the truth. You have to save yourself. You have to do the inner work. Yes. You know, life is not an outside, outside. It's inside. Yeah. That's all it is. It's yeah. inside. So you make your life what you think of it. So, I mean, that, that's helped me. And again, it's a, it's a constant process. Yep. You know, I give, get up every day and I reach out to my network, Absolutely. you being one of them, and saying, hey, how's your day? And maybe throw you a quote to, to keep us pumped up because we need each other. We all need each I other. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. I love that, Thank and you. I do need to. <laughs> that was my, uh, my my post on Facebook today was be your own hero. I love you it, know? and I saw that, and I commented on it. And and you have to be your own hero. You have to be the star of your own show. Yeah, you, know, you have to work on yourself for for uh, in order to be the best for others, family, friends, your network. Well, and you said something before that made me think of the four agreements, which we've talked a yeah. about, um, you know, pr in previous shows, the everyone is doing the best they can. My husband and I had a conversation about this yesterday and somebody didn't show up to wash one of our cars, right? Like first world problems. Yeah. And um, my husband said, you know, maybe he's just doing the best he can. And maybe that's what, that's what this is about. And I'm like, yeah, do you think he's doing his best when he doesn't show up? And he said, well, maybe for where he is in his life right now, he is doing the best. And I was like, wow, that makes yeah, me feel a lot less annoyed about it and a lot absolutely. less mental, right? Absolutely. I mean, your husband's a very wise man. You're a wise person too. But yeah, you're right. I mean, he has that right mindset. Look, I get pissed off and ticked off and somebody cuts me off. I'm like, Ugh. then I start going back to what I learned. And I'm like, maybe that per I don't know what that person's going through. Yes. We're, we're all, we, we all have baggage, right? Yeah. We all are carrying something. And again, it took me a while. I'm not some expert, but it and I'm constantly a work in progress, but it took me a while to come to that conclusion. All right. Maybe this person that cut me off, maybe they're, God forbid, maybe a tragedy just helped, you know, happened. Maybe they lost somebody. Maybe they lost their job. I, I don't know. Yes. But it's really kind of changed the way I, I look at the world. And I'm, I'm a lot less of reacting in a negative way towards that than I had been in, in the past. So Which your husband's very right. He hit it. Because you know yeah. what? Your husband said that, Golden. And you know what probably happened is you started to reflect and you're like, you know, the pissed offness. That way, that's not a word. You know? <laughs> It could um, be. You know, your, your, your irritation probably started to dissipate, right? When you heard that. Totally. Totally. Yeah, and you're like, you know what? You're right, honey. You're, you're exactly right. And then, There's you know, I problems, it, man. putting it in the context of other people, like my children or like you said, yeah, exactly. on the road. And if we start Absolutely. looking at the world that way, then it's not giving people a pass so much. But what it's doing is it's wrapping love and compassion around every thought you have about every person. And that, that sounds like a big feat, but it makes your life better. Exactly. It makes you feel good. You're not holding on to that irritation, that bitterness. You know, we, we just gave one example of somebody not showing up to wash your car. I mean, there's millions of other examples we could get. Yes. And I'm not trying to say, you know, paint a rosy picture for somebody's life who's a mess right now and they're going through hard times, but you know, it's just, you you basically, your thoughts are going to determine where you go in your life. Absolutely. If you, if you hold on to that anger and bitterness, like I did for many years and yeah. hurt and depression and all that stuff, then it, it's not going to get you anywhere. And then you're going to attract the people that are just like you. Yeah. And then you're going to be where, in a pit. Where was your, where was your lifeline in that? Was there something specific that happened that kind of bounced you out of it? Or was it more of like a gradual, just kind of reaching for? for I had a series of events that, that okay. happened after I left law enforcement. I retired. My dad passed away the same year I retired very close to my dad. So that, that was a blow, obviously any family member, not just for me, but any person out there that loses a loved one, it's very tough. So yeah. I, I, it hit me very hard as well as the rest of my family. And then, you know, I had a family member try to commit suicide. He's okay. 
So okay. that hit me again. And yeah. then I went through a pretty nasty, contentious divorce and painful divorce, painful for both of us. So I had a culmination of things happen. And, and I'm not trying to say, you know, that's the worst that can happen in your life. But for me, it was. Mm-hmm. And so coupled with some tragic events that happened or some incidents that were bad and me seeing what I saw in a career in the military or time in the military, a career in law enforcement, the pain, the death, the, the hurt, the sorrow, it hit me. Yeah. And so it basically came down to me hurting myself. Or me reaching out. I chose the latter, thank God. Thank and I reached God. out and asked for help. And thank God I had a network out there that I had built over the years where I could reach out to family, friends, and said, look, I need help. That was the hardest thing I, I ever did in my life. Mm. <laughs> and and, and all, the, all the stuff I did, jump out of planes, all kinds of other crazy stuff. That was the hardest thing I did was, was reaching out and saying, look, I need some help. I'm putting my ego and my fear aside. And, and and it was the best thing I ever did, Golden, and that's the reason why I'm here today. It, it was hitting that rock bottom in your life, and I know you. You we've talked a lot. You you know you have hit places. You and your husband and family have hit places that are horrible. But what are you going to do? You know you can yeah. you can you can go up, or you can just stay there. So I knew that yeah. there was a, a bigger calling for me. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to get better physically, emotionally, and I made that call you know, uh, and I'm here. Yeah. So it was a series of events and I'm not unique. My problems aren't unique. You know, everybody has problems, you know, but I consider myself blessed and honored and thank God every day that I'm here. And now I'm doing it. And now look at what you're like, look at how powerful that situation is. First of all, you know, congratulations because vulnerability, you know, we were, we talked in my last episode 69 about, the, you know, men and emotions and being vulnerable and how Absolutely. you guys were never taught to do that. So like putting, casting your ego aside and becoming vulnerable and asking for help is probably one of the hardest things to do as a human being. So congratulations on doing that. But Absolutely. now you're, you've created that network from walking through that experience. And you can say, I know the darkness that you're in. Maybe it's not the mm-hmm. same situation, but the things that you went through were big. Those are big life things. Mm-hmm. And kind of losing your identity, like not being, being the same, you know, profession you were forever, then losing, you know, the, the, your father and then dealing with, you know, even the death of, or almost death of someone else. It's like, these are things that are like beyond finances, beyond the silly stuff that we get ourselves upset with every day. These are like the deeper, it's time to grow you know, and it's time to step up and it's time to become more. And it's probably one of the hardest and most challenging things we go through, but the most rewarding. Absolutely. Absolutely. What helps you to create this identity of, I want to create a network to help people, you know, walk through this easier than I had to. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I was just the way I was, you, you mentioned men and, you know, yeah, got to be tough all the time. So nothing wrong with being tough, but I was conditioned through the military and you know, I was in an elite unit. I, I did that and then I was in the military and you, you know, it's just reinforced in, in that environment where you kind of just push, your, you know, push your feelings aside and you, you compartmentalize and do all that stuff. And I'm here to tell you that sooner or later, it is going to come to the service and it's going to manifest in a variety of ways, drugs, addiction, mental health issues, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, so, I mean, again, you, you, you should, I'm not telling people who are listening that you have to, but you should just realize that there's so many more people out there that are suffering like you that have suffered mm-hmm. through challenges and tough times in their lives that have made it to the other side. All you have to do is just, Make that call. I mean, we live in an amazing society, Golden, right now. We're amazing time in the world where we have technology. We have all this information available at our fingertips. Sure, you have to vet the information and you have to make sure it's it's good for you, but information nonetheless. Yeah. So I am blessed. Now I'm in a role. I'm a national liaison for FHG Health, like you mentioned. Thank you for mentioning it. And now my job, my mission right now is to help the first responder community, when I say first responder community, I'm not just talking cops, I'm talking fire, EMS, corrections, all those dispatchers, to help them get the treatment they need and deserve um, every day. And yeah. that's my mission. That's what I live for. I'm very passionate about it because too many 
of our brave men and women are suffering. I mean, not just the first responder community, but as a nation as a whole, everybody's suffering with something. It seems like it. I mean, so that's my mission. That's why I'm here. And I'm very passionate about it. That's amazing. And just shedding, shedding such a beautiful light on, on a world that does feel like it's in pain, but helping people to understand that your pain does not have to be your life, no. you know, that it can just be a chapter in your life that you heal through and you grow from and you become more. And I think that's what the biggest testament that you have is, is that example. And I think well, that's exactly right. that we share too. It's like, you know, going through financial struggle, bankruptcy, all the stuff that we went through, it's like, mm-hmm. and then, you know, selling everything we own and moving across the country and doing crazy stuff like that. It's like showing people that if we just live in our fears and we don't ever deal with the emotional stuff, you're still vibrating with it. You're still Absolutely. manifesting from it. And I, I love the idea of talking about responding because I had a big conversation about responding yesterday. So we're up leveling and we have been for the last few years with abundance. And we're in a place that we've never been before, but it feels familiar, right? Mm-hmm. Like we've got a good flow. It's coming in. It's going out. It's a good flow, right? And my husband and I were talking about his little triggers and my little triggers and that feeling of, oh, no, is this going to come crashing before us once again. And that's an old response from something that we created before. And so looking at the the evidence of how we've changed and the little things that we're responding the same to, we talked about how can we change this response? So can you speak to, I love the whole idea of talking to you about responding because you've got first responders that are coming into situations that are compartmentalizing because they have to, to deal with a tragic situation. But how can they respond to it differently instead of shoving it down, you know, taking substances to, to, to not deal with it? How can, can they do this while they're in the profession or do they have to wait until they're retired? You know, like no. what's your thought on that? You know, two words, open up, yeah. open up. I love it. You know, I mean, again, it goes back to what I was saying, my friend, where you know, we're just, we're just, it's the environment too. It's the culture of law enforcement. It's the culture of the military, even though I think the military is doing a little bit better job now. It's yep. just the culture, you know, you, you hit it right on the head. You yep. know, that compartmentalization, that incident where you can say, I'm going to call to call to call, <clears throat> excuse me, I got to bury the next call to keep me alive or keep me focused on this call. That's good. But yep. what do you do when you, when you go home? Yes. i tell you what I did. I yep. went home. Yep. Ex-wife, hence the word, ex-wife words. Yep. She would ask, you know, how was your day? Ah, good. And yeah. then you know what I would do? Instead of telling her what I went through, is I would go isolate. Yep. You want to go out to dinner? No. I'm going to go to the liquor store, though. Yeah, of course. I'm do that. I'll be about you. Want anything? Yeah. No, okay. Cool. Yep. Start drinking. Yeah. So, Again, you know, for the listener, and for, if the first responders out there are listening, this is not rocket science. We're not trying to, you know, invent some complex thing right here. You yep. have to do th- two things, and that's open up. Talk. Now, when I say talk, talk to trusted mm-hmm. friends or yeah. family. Yeah. Trusted family and, yeah. fa- and friends. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to open up to just everybody. You know, does that – you know, it always amazes me, Golden – the people that say you can't do anything or like in your case, when you, I'm sure you had people in your world when you hit rock bottom, when you've devastation financially, you lost everything. And I'm sure you had people in your life. I know I did where, Oh, you can't do that. That's yeah. a horrible, horrible <laughs> idea. Do you ever notice that I'm not trying to, there might be loved ones, but do you ever notice the family and friends that say that are probably in the same situation you are. And now they're maybe they're trying to give you advice. Yeah. Yeah, it's like who the hell are you? What, you do, mirror anybody? I mean, you have, how about if you you look in the mirror? You need to, and it gets back to my point. You need to surround yourself with people. I am blessed and honored to know you because you and I are on the same wavelength. Yeah, we might have bad days, but I know I can reach out to you. You can reach out to me. You yeah. need to surround yourself with people that are going to lift you up, not pull oh, you down. I- that I told and 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 I think a lot of times people because of vibration because of frequency and what we tune into we tend to tune into you know misery loves company is like such a true statement so when we have problems we tend to gravitate towards the people that have the same problems and then we keep talking about them and 
all we're really doing is activating that problem over and over and over again with no Absolutely. solution, right? You ever hear, so you ever hear the, the f- crab fisherman story? What's that? You ever hear the crab fisherman story? No, tell me. A couple are walking down the beach one day. I'm giving you the abbreviated version. They're walking okay. down the beach. They see somebody that's fishing for crabs. You know, he's right off the beach, little crabs, and he's got a bucket right there, and it's full of crabs. And as the couple passes the bucket, they notice that one of these crabs is trying to get up. You know, he's got his little claw on the side right there, and he's trying to, he's trying to get out of the, the bucket. He's like, screw yeah. this. I'm getting out of the bucket. And the couple says, hey, man, there's tells the fisherman, hey, one of the crabs are just trying to get out of the bucket. And he said, it won't. You know what happened? The other crabs Grabbed pulled me. the crab down. Yes. <laughs> so those yeah. are some of the people in your life right now. Because like you said, my friend, misery yeah. loves company. <laughs> yeah. 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 People don't really, people don't, you know, enjoy it when you're growing and becoming better and it, you're creating a life that is different than theirs when they're no. not because it casts, it casts a spotlight on I'm what there. they're doing on their unhappiness and how they're not living their dreams. And I've had to come through a lot of that because, you know, I am sharing this message with people and I'm working and I've lost a lot of friends, to be honest. Absolutely. So have I. And that's okay because we're just not. <laughs> and, and this is what I always say about people in my life. We're not vibrationally aligned. Like yeah. if somebody cancels on me, if somebody unfriends me on Facebook, I don't take, this is another four agreement, don't take anything personally Mm -hmm. because I'm in a different vibration. They're in a, you know, they're lower, whatever. We're just not vibrationally aligned and that's okay. Eventually they may come to the, come to what I believe, but we're humans. So we get to do whatever we want here. We get to believe whatever we want here. I just feel like this message is so empowering to those who are open and ready that I can't help but share it. And I'm probably not even knowing about it. <laughs> no, I, I love it. Absolutely. You know, like getting back to people, I mean, you got to weed your garden every once in a while, right? Yeah. yeah you got to weed your garden. Your, your garden's not going to grow. It's not going to have those beautiful flowers, that beautiful vegetable garden, whatever you're growing in your, and if you let the weeds take over, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. So you have to weed your gardens. The same people that you had in your life, in your 20s or, you know, 30s or 40s are not, probably not going to be the same people that you have right now. And that's not okay. Really. Yeah. No, that's true. That's totally and that's true. that's okay. As you move through this life and you pivot, you go through different phases, your, your wants, your needs are going to change, mm-hmm. hopefully for the better. So hopefully you align yourself with people that are, like you said, I love that, on the same wavelength, the same energy. Yeah. And then you really, yeah. you really get to know, right, my friend? You really understand when things hit bottom, the people that said you were their friend, yes. you really understand who are your real friends and who are the friends that are going to stick with you. No, absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. And, and yeah. coming out of stuff like that and recognizing, like, I just love to watch the energy field. So I'll absolutely. watch the energy and it, the energy will tell me, you know, who's ready for the message and who isn't. So this is why I I work to not like cram this down people's throats because that kind of does the opposite. Um, I heard a really cool meme the other day that said, when you're talking to somebody and trying to make them accountable before they're ready to be accountable, it will feel like an attack. And I was like, whoa. (laughs) Absolutely. No, I think that's a very, very good, that's a very good meme because like it goes back to you. What you what you said? Okay, now they have to internalize. Now they have to reflect internally. Yes. And, and, and it's everybody's on a different timeline. Everybody's on a different path. You, me, everybody. And yeah. yeah, I agree with that 100. percent If you're trying to kind of force the issue, then you, usually people are going to get defensive. And, oh. Yeah, people and then you're the opposite. You know exactly. So yeah. you need to just seek out people, and you'll know. Like the moment you came on my show, the moment we started talking, I knew. Okay, she she's. She's the bomb. Her and I are on the same page here. Yep. I mean, you For feel sure. the energy, even though it's virtual. Yeah. You, you feel the, 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 the energy, the flow, you know, the, the, the connectivity. And yeah. that's what you need, not just with you and I, but that's what people need in their daily lives, personally and professionally. Yes. Yes. That's what we're all yearning for. 
Yes. And as much as like relationships are here to show us stuff and teach us stuff, they're not supposed to be so hard. So if you're in relationships that are super hard and dense and heavy and you're giving a lot, you know, there's that imbalance of energy exchange. You really have to look at that because at the end of the day, the most important thing, and we have not been taught this either, is our relationship with self and how much we value our own selves and the time that we give to people. And it doesn't mean you just start cutting people out of your life, although I have done a lot of that. <laughs> um, you know, some people could judge me for that, but the truth is, like, I, like you, feel like I have this mission and this path. So I'm not going to spend my energy trying to drag people along with me that don't want to be in this high vibration, that don't want to take life by storm and, you know, not just live sucky existences. You yeah, have mediocre <laughs> lives. I mean, and I agree with you. Look, I'm the same way. Sometimes you have to cut yeah. people out of your life. Look, life is hard. Life is very difficult. And sometimes you have yeah. to do what's best for you and your happiness. You know, I tell people that are going to treatment all the time, and I'm not a counselor, I'm not a psychologist, but I tell people I can speak from experience. I learned how to be very selfish very quickly with my mental health, my happiness, yep. what's best for me. I'm not talking in a narc narcissistic way a hubris way, oh, screw my fan. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about loving yourself. And we as a society have not been taught to do that. It That's is true. perfectly okay to love yourself. Mm -hmm. It is perfectly okay to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm beautiful inside and out. But a Amen. lot of people don't look at it that way. No, definitely and that's not. That's the hard thing. If you are if you're not happy with yourself, and I'm not saying you're going through you're not going through difficult times, but you have to find a way to be happy with yourself, or you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life. Completely. And you know what? We don't have very much time here, Golden. You know that. I agree. I agree. So um, I want to touch on this because you just brought that up, loving yourself, and this is something. So not only have I had an up level in this abundance and financial stuff. But I've had some different changes with my body. So we all, mm -hmm. you know, we all age, right? We all age. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all have these certain beliefs around it. And I think particularly women, but also men, because I've watched my husband transform this as well, is, you know, wanting to be healthy and wanting to be vital. And I know that you work out. And something I recently went through, so I was obsessed with losing weight and, you know, trying to stay the same as I was at 25. And, you know, our bodies go through changes and there, I didn't want to take on the belief, I can't lose weight, I can't lose weight. But that was literally what I was doing every day, tracking my food, working out like a maniac, working out beyond what my body really needed. So then you get cortisol and then your body gets stressed. Sure. So how, I think it was about three months ago, I let the whole thing go. And I feel fit and I feel happy. And it there's no more of this, I got to lose weight. I got to lose, because that's misery. Yes. So can you speak like, and that's response, right? I'm like, I just have to change my response. Like, even if I eat yeah. a lot, you know, if I, and I don't really eat a lot, but if like I, I have a cinnamon roll, which I've done a few times recently. Oh, jeez. It was wonderful. <laughs> I, split, I split it both times with someone. There's nothing was, wrong with that. It was such an incredible experience, and I didn't get the response of feeling guilty, yeah, guilty. feeling like I was going to get fat, feeling like yeah. I was bad. This is what a lot of people do. I was bad this weekend. A lot of people this morning worked out so hard. I said, oh, yeah, everybody's trying to make up for what they did over the weekend. Absolutely. I'm not doing that anymore. And I'm doing what's right for my body because we work out at a very intense gym with like 30 year olds. So we're like, okay, we're going to do what's right for us. I'm, I'm not doing that today. Yeah. So can you speak a little bit to that? You know, like some of the little things that maybe you have overcome or do you, are you still in that with your body and get aging and getting older? No, I, you know, I mean, I think we all go through through periods. You know, the biggest thing that I think a lot of people, well, I speak for me, is that you want to compare yourself. Oh my God, look at that guy over there; he's ripped. I want to be like that guy. <laughs> hey, what do you do, dude? I'm not talking about naturally. What are you doing? Because it looks like you're doing other stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, it's and so. I think for me, you know, I would constantly compare myself. I want to be. I want to look like that guy over there because he's, you know, he's a good looking guy. You know, and so I think that's. 
that's huge with most people. They, 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 and especially for women, I feel, feel bad for, uh, I think men, some men don't care, yes. but I think it's much harder for women in the society we're living in because you're conditioned, you have to look a certain way and, you know, be a certain weight, all that stuff. Yep. So I think that's, that's a big problem. It gets back to that inner peace. You know, you mentioned, you know, a cinnamon roll, who cares? Yes. You know, it's satisfaction. And the more importantly is you didn't feel guilty about it. Yes. You know, so, and listen to your body. That's the thing too. You know, we're all aging and, and when you're pushing yourself and your body's telling you the mind is powerful, yep. and, but you're starting to ache or maybe you, have, you need to listen to your body, especially yep. as we age. But I think it goes back to, you know, what you said so eloquently is you said, you know, that inner peace. I mean, stop trying to compare yourself to other people. Because yeah. there's only one golden Duffy. There's only one path that's given. And I should be happy. I am unique. There's nobody else in the world like you, my friend. There's nobody else in the world like me. So you have to be happy or you should be happy with yourself because we have this one shot. And I know I want to look good. You want to look good. Do it at your own yeah. pace. Quit comparing yourself to other people. If you want to go have a cinnamon yeah. roll, have a cinnamon roll. Totally. God made them for a reason. They're delicious. I think they have crack in them too, which makes them so addicting. <laughs> yes, yes, but yeah, I, mean, it's just... I often won't eat things like that. Yeah, I often won't. Well, it's, it's I don't really want to know what that tastes like. But it was, it was a good experience for me and just recognizing how my thoughts have changed. I also saw this woman at the beach the other day and she was really fit. And I used to feel that less than. And I actually looked at her and I thought, I look like that. And I told my husband, I'm like, I don't know if I like in reality look like that, but the fact that I believe believe that means my reality is right there. And that's how you identity create. It's Absolutely. not by looking in the mirror and going, this is what I need to change. It's by looking in the mirror and seeing and believing what you want to see. Absolutely. And believe. And I think that has been the biggest change is the response because we can spend our whole freaking lives being unhappy about the stupidest, littlest thing. Yeah, exactly. It's the minutia. Do not matter. They do not matter. No, it's the minutia. You know what I love seeing? I love seeing now. You didn't see it when you and I were growing up, but now it's becoming more mainstream. I like, and I'm glad it is, plus size people. Yes. And, and, and ads. You know what? They're beautiful. And you know what? They're telling the world, screw it. I'm gorgeous. I believe in myself. You can judge me, but it's just going to roll over. Yes. You can shame me, and I'm still going to be here. Yeah. So those are beautiful people. We're all beautiful people, but I really admire that because we put such an emphasis on weight and beauty and looks. And those are all important to a degree, but it's not everything. Inner peace is everything. Being happy with yourself yes, and being loving yourself. Yes. And I feel like if you truly value and love yourself, you are going to do the things Absolutely. that you need health and vitality. Love is the most powerful force yes. in the universe. Amen. It, it all centers around love. So yes. once you, I agree with you, once you center around, okay, I love myself, I'm going to do great things, guess what? Everything's going to open up. Absolutely. Might take some time. Yeah. Might not just fall in your lap. Nothing no. really does ever happen like that. Well, and that's, where, that's where the trick is because people get yeah. really impatient with law of attraction. They get really impatient with manifestation. And the truth is, energetically, you've already created it. Now you have to Absolutely. be not, not just patient, not waiting. You have to allow, you have to be open to receive that that energy to break down into physical matter. So most yeah. people get patient, their response is the same. And so that's when people don't manifest and then they go, this manifesting stuff doesn't work for me. I'm not powerful enough and all well, their power. Because, yeah. That's because so, the universe doesn't work on your timetable. God does not, whatever you believe, higher power, God does not work on your timetable. There's a True. different timetable. True. And the all-knowing, all-wise universe and God, whatever you believe in, yep. there's a reason for it. Yes. Yes. There's a reason for it. But we live in a society, Golden, you know, where we should. I want things yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's my million dollars? I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. And just for the record, I do buy lottery tickets. Well, well, you can't win if you don't play. I know. I just bought one, though. Yeah. That's all you need. One. That's all you need. That's all you need. 
I totally agree with that. And I have won the lottery. You know that, right? What? Yes, I won the lottery. Is that why you're driving around in California in your Lambo? I saw that. I won. I got five numbers out of six on a million-dollar draw. So I got $975. And, Wait a uh, minute. That should be more than that for five it, numbers. As cruel as that seems, it enabled us to book our plane. Tri- it was the yes from the universe to bl- book our plane trip to the first time we ever – it was the second time we came to California, but to scout out where we wanted to live, and it facilitated our dream. That's so, amazing. It was perfect. I, you know, it would have been awesome if it was a million dollars, but I would not have learned as much and I wouldn't be in the same position, I think, financially and in, in understanding how energy works financially. If, and that's the thing, everybody thinks, oh, if I just won the lottery, no, everything no, no, would be no, great. No. And have you, no, no, no. I've said this before, but if you've seen those shows, m- most of those people lose all their money because they weren't really vibrationally aligned with it. They were for like maybe a minute. But then they didn't have the the worthiness or the Absolutely. confidence to carry that out or the management abilities to carry that out. Absolutely. So it's not winning the lottery. It's, it's the journey that we really want to get to, to the abundance that yeah. feels really good to me. And that yeah. could be the lottery. It could be. But you well, don't it want be, it before but- you're ready for it. Exactly. And it's not going to come to you before you're ready for it. And, and exactly. you know, I love the people who say, well, root of, money is the root of all evil. Okay, the same people that don't have any. That's right. why they don't have any is because you don't you never hear a rich person or a person that's abundant saying, well, money is the root of all evil. No, because they think differently. Money yes. is a tool. Yes. If you're unhappy, money might make you still unhappy. If you're a good person, you're a philanthropic and you take care of people, guess what? It's going to amplify it. Yes. So the old you uh, saying that money is the root of all evil or somehow in the Bible it says, you know, that money is evil. The Bible doesn't say that. Jesus was a millionaire. A lot of us right. in, in those times, he, he knew the importance of abundance. So this archaic thinking that somehow money is bad is the reason why money is not coming into your life. You could gather all the money in the world all the money in the world and give it to people who are complaining they don't have enough. And guess what, Golden? Sooner or later, it's going to get back into the hands of the people that are drawing it to them. Absolutely. I totally, without a shadow of a doubt, believe that. So tell me what you think about um, like up-leveling. Like how – how do you think people up level their money, their money blueprint, their money story? Like what's your what's your advice to that? I think you need to hang out with people that are financially better and the more knowledgeable than than you. Yes. So I mean everybody's an expert, right? Oh, your aunt is an expert. Your brother is an expert, the same brother who doesn't have any money. And they're willing to give you advice on what you should do. Oh, no, I'm talking about surround yourself with the people that have abundance, not just with money, but that abundance mindset, and you are going to change your life. You're, they're going to, you know, become a mentee to, you know, have go seek out mentors. You don't yeah. have to be face to face in front of somebody. You can do like a virtual call, like you just ask for help. Yeah, you know, but we a lot of us don't like doing that. Yeah, and then they wonder why they get themselves into the messes they do. And there's nothing wrong with aligning yourself and seeking out those people that are smarter than you that know more about finance and investing and all this other stuff, Bitcoin or all this other stuff that can help you. So that's up leveling. Yeah. And you have to get out of that comfort zone that you're in because all your growth is in discomfort. Yes. (laughs) Whether it's money, therapy, whatever. So So again, you don't have to go to Harvard. You don't have to have a, finance degree you don't have to i mean look at some of these billionaires yeah crazy Bill Gates never finished college you well, know michael dell never finished college now those are the outliers but you know what i mean to- no totally and okay. my husband and i had this conversation yesterday about like value like exchange of value we just saw the new elvis movie which um is about elvis and it's amazing uh, but how, you know, how worthy Elvis was and how he never really did feel worthy. But um, interestingly, in the beginning of that movie, I caught a quote, just to go back to what you said about this, and then I want to talk about value. But I caught a quote in the beginning of the movie that said, fear is life. And I was yeah. like, that is so impactful to me. Because if we never experience walking through our fears, we don't experience life, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's like the ship that, the ship, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
It's like the ship that gets built and it just sits in the harbor or it sits tied up and docked without yeah. experiencing the roughness of the seas. The ship was designed to be at sea. Yeah. You are designed to take risks. Calculated, thought out risks, nonetheless, but you have to do that. I'm not just th th don't throw, throw a caution to the wind, but you were designed to take chances. You were designed to go for your dreams. You were designed, because I don't want to be that person, Golden. I don't know about you or your listeners. I don't want to be that person on my deathbed going, shit, I should have did this. I should have done that. I was too scared. Seriously. I was too afraid. I listened to my sister. I listened to my cousin. And now yep. it's too late. Yeah. No, none of us. I don't think any of us want to do no. that. And I think that's a huge thing that's happening now in our world is people are recognizing like what is working and what isn't working Absolutely. and how power up. But so we were talking about value and this was crazy because mm -hmm. we were talking about like different professions yeah. and like what my husband does, he's, he, so he's a remodeling contractor. He can build a home from the ground up extremely valuable thing, right? Absolutely. But he's, you know, talking about the cap of, of money in that industry. And yes, you know, there are people making millions, but what he's doing, you know, he feels like, and I'm like, you give so much value to people's lives. And it's like, yeah. so he's thinking like, okay, I'm at a cap with this, like what, how much I can make. And I'm thinking we just need to align with abundance and it's coming from everywhere else. So it doesn't necessarily have to come from that profession. Because if you look at the value of what Justin Bieber does in this world, right? Yes, he's an entertainer mm -hmm. and that's great. But does he really impact lives? Maybe he does with his music. I don't know. Um, um, you know, I'm a believer. But you can't hours for dollar that. You can't. No. So the value that we bring to the world and the abundance that we experience is not based on a society's paradigm. It's based on how we feel and what we bring. So I'm looking at all these different professions and I'm like, okay, so how did these people do this? Like, this is how my brain works mm -hmm. is like watching the energy field. Well, they had confidence. They believed in themselves. Um, if you ever saw Absolutely. just people story, which I did not, like at 13, 14 years old, he went to the recording studio and just started playing outside and started calling in his following to watch him there. And that's how he got a contract. Yeah. So it's like how Absolutely. much you believe in yourself and your own worthiness and your own ability to share your gifts is what creates the abundance. It's not Absolutely. that. It's that, it's that you know? drive. It's that passion. It's, you know, it's the the way we were raised and conditioned and who we surround ourselves with, the people that are telling us we can't do it versus the people that tell us we can do it. But it's, it all comes down to that, you know, inside and that drive and the passion that you have. That's why, I mean, look at Tom Brady. Yeah. You know I mean, I mean, and people hate him. Some people hate him. Some people love him. I think he's an amazing quarterback. Why is he the number one quarterback out there? Because he has that passion. He has that drive. He has that competitiveness. Okay. He wants yeah. to be the best. Yep. And, and any athlete, any actor yep. that, that is the best because they work their ass off. Yep. To, to yep. get there. And they realize that, you know, nothing's going to fall in their lap. But getting back to your, your husband, he is helping so many people. He's providing homes. Right. Amazing. He's building yeah. something so somebody can, or a family can live and something that he built. That is so rewarding. I How many people it. can say they do that? I'm providing a home for yeah. a family or a couple or a single person. I mean, how many people can say that? Complete, complete value. So much it, value. Of course it's value. And we all want money. I'm not trying to discount money. Money is very important. It's fine. It is very, very important. <laughs> but, you know, the value, the key is getting back to Bieber and, you know, okay, what value is he providing? Okay, yeah, he's selling, he's providing value to himself. He's selling millions of records and all that stuff. That's great for him. Yeah. He worked his butt off to get there. Okay, great. But like you said, what value? Yeah. He's, he, he, it won't be as long lasting as your husband building a home. Right, right. For the last 50, 60, 70 years, maybe longer. Yeah. That's impact. Yeah. That is impact. If you can change somebody's life and you can provide them with a home and happiness, that's powerful. I completely agree. And I think that what we're doing to bring this stuff to people 
the value that we're putting out into the world and changing the way people look at the world and the way they look at themselves, I think creates more success than than any other profession because you're getting people the keys. It's like I call it the keys to the kingdom. And it's, you know, it's using our traumatic situations as leverage to show people, hey, there's hope. Come this way. I'm shining the light back for you. Follow me, right? Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. So I mean, people, I really, you, have the, you have the power. I mean, you yeah. always have the power. People have the power. Amen. You, you, you Amen. always have the power within you to make your life better. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, um, how can people find you and, uh, and, and what do you have for people? <laughs> well, I, I, you know, Golden, you're, you're amazing. You're awesome. I tell you this all the time. And if people want to reach out to me, they can find me at cjevolution.com. That's my website. There's all my shows, my social, everything at that website. Uh, I also work, for, like you said, I appreciate it, FHE Health and their Shatterproof Program for First Responders. My the, the, the work information that I just mentioned is on the website, cjevolution.com. So I appreciate it. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, thank you for sharing all of your wisdom with us. I'm sure this will be uh, one of many. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. You rock. Yeah, because we you have rock. some good stuff to share. And yeah, yeah. Thank I appreciate you. And I appreciate friend. your appreciation on the daily because, you know, even I think that people think once we get to where you and I are that there's no doubts and there's no, no you know, question there. of who we are and what we're doing. And it's still there. And I'm like, I just keep reminding myself I have to change my response. And then I get little texts from you or messages on Facebook. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm actually yeah, doing, doing it. it. It's a journey. It's, it's a, journey. a journey. You I just got to keep on the right path. Well, thanks for being here, my friend. I, I love you. I love sharing time with you as always. And we love you all. Peace out. See you. Have a good day, everybody.